Let's get to the news. <laughs> we got the story from dailymail.co.uk. Maxine Waters may have handed defense grounds for appeal and the turning over of this trial. Derek Chauvin trial judge blasts abhorrent Democrat for calling for riots if no conviction. They say Derek Chauvin's defense attorney, Eric Nelson, called for a mistrial after the jury retired on Monday. He cited Rep. Maxine Waters' comments on the case as he argued that there was no way the jury could be unbiased given constant media coverage. He's right. Now that we have U.S. representatives threatening acts of violence and retaliation to this trial, it's frankly mind-blowing, Nelson said. Judge Peter Cahill replied, I grant you Congresswoman Waters may have handed you grounds for appeal and the turning over of this trial. But Cahill refused to grant a mistrial and adjourned the court until the jury comes back with a verdict. It wasn't just that. The defense argued prosecutorial misconduct because in rebuttal, the prosecution said that I guess they were like making up they were telling stories and it was nonsense and repeatedly kept saying that it was essentially fabrication of facts, which you're not allowed to do in court. The prosecution is supposed to say that, you know, our expert testified to this and we hold this to be correct. You can't say the other person's making making up crap and they're lying and telling stories. And so when the defense said, you know, objection, the judge said overruled. Don't say stories again, but, you know, he's allowed to say stories. Then when the prosecution kept berating the defense and insulting them, the judge finally stepped down and was like, okay, you got to stop doing that. This is what bugs me. We just saw, how, how long were the riots going on this, so far in Minneapolis? You guys? Well, they've been uh, since, well, the recent ones since last Sunday, the mm -hmm. death of Dante Wright. So about, so about about eight days, yeah. a week. Nelson immediately, the defense for, for Chauvin, asked the judge to sequester the jury. And he said... So they don't watch the mm -hmm. news. They don't see what's going on. And the judge said, well, I'll instruct the jury not to watch the news. And the defense argued, everyone knows about what's going on. Everyone's talking about it. And he, he was saying that even TV shows, fictional TV shows on Thursday night, NBC or whatever, are referencing the trial and making statements about what they want to occur. And so he's like, you need to sequester them. The judge initially said no. Then after the riots started with Dante Wright, then he was like, judge, I'd like to ask you again to sequester the jury. And the judge is like, I don't think we need to do that. And now the judge is like, well, the jury, the trial may be completely overturned. That's incompetence. What does man. that mean overturned? Is that a mistrial? So it means there, there'll be a verdict. Then the defense is, if, let, let's say the, the jurors come back and say guilty on all counts. I mean, let's say the jury comes back and says acquitted on all counts, but manslaughter. Mm -hmm. No matter what happens now, the defense can file an appeal to a higher court saying, Rep. Maxine Waters... Democrat came from California, came to our state and said, unless we get a conviction for premeditated murder, which they didn't charge Chauvin with, we're going to get more confrontational. They've already been rioting. What does more confrontational mean? Yamiche, is that her name? Yamiche Elsendor? Yeah, Yamiche yeah. Elsendor said the, the right is claiming that Rep. Maxine Waters called for violence because she said, get more active and more confrontational. That's not a call for violence. And I'm like, confrontational, what does that mean? Like confronting somebody? If you're already burning down their buildings and throwing bricks at cops, what is more confrontational than that? Now the judge is admitting, yep, there it is. The jury, the jury of course knows they've been threatened and they're going to burn the city down no matter what. Because she said first degree murder and they don't have that. Yeah, they don't. And, and, and I thought at minimum they would at least sequester before the, the weekend started. And they, didn't yep. even, they didn't even do that. And that's obviously when, when Maxine Waters uh, came. And I mean, I think just being on the ground, um, one of our reporters, Lisa Benetton, that she did a great video where she asked folks, hey, you know, what happens if you don't get, you know, if you guys don't get murdered? And people literally say and th that are mm -hmm. from Brooklyn. So they said, we're burning it down. We're burning it down. Everybody. And, and they don't need, um, I would say, a, a, you know, with Maxine Waters' comments, it's like just, you're just giving these people more power to just say, hey, if we do this, we're good to go. And I think a lot of those folks are going to point to last summer and say, hey, we go out and, you know, do our thing. It's OK, because. Kamala Harris was there to bail us out just like last year. Yep. And I think that's something that we uh, have to keep on back of our mind. I think all the cops should resign. I think mm. every single cop in, in the Minneapolis area should just resign right now. Just get out of there. Just leave. Oh, that's tough. They I, voted for it. That uh, They did. Um, and I know right now, the, the, the big difference right now is compared to last year is, um, you know, being on the ground is, I guess, Minnesota with the law enforcement, they didn't have a, a communication system between, you know, the Minnesota State Troopers, National Guard, and then local police. So coming this, this year around, being on the ground reporting, we learned that now Minnesota has created a program called Operation Safety Net. So now we have the National Guard. Uh, local police and state troopers now working all basically now hand in hand to control these groups. I will say this. I think, you know, Richard, you know, mm -hmm. being on the ground again in Brooklyn Center, 
they did a great job of protecting the police department. You know, they, they put the barricades, they had the law enforcement there. But one thing that we, we, we have to remember, and I try to tell these folks all the time, is when you have so much law enforcement, you know, concentrated on just one area, it leaves the rest of yeah, the city exactly. stretched thin. I mean, just, and, and I, I said this last, uh, this was reported yesterday, but numbers might even be higher. But since last Sunday of Dante Wright's death, the police department in Brooklyn Center, which is a little small town area, they have already received over 200 calls of either businesses damaged, mm-hmm. looted, or burglaries. And that's one thing that we had to remember is when you have so much protection at the police center, the rest of the, the that, city. That whole shopping in. mall is literally right next to the police station. Like th- that whole shopping mall that was looted on the first couple of nights. Mm-hmm. It's like 100 yards from right. the this, whole this, this, police station. This is why I'm saying the cops should resign. Or, or at the very least, you know, we, we had, uh, uh, I think it was Tom Rogan, he mentioned, yeah. they should give notice that in 30 days they'll all resign. That'd Something be interesting. Like that. I've been speaking to some inside sources inside the uh, Portland PD from last summer. And when I was speaking to a police officer, she said the morale is, is low. She says we have people transferring, you know, you know just literally don't say. Retire, huh. re- yeah, retire, retiring early. And, I mean, I, I would expect that we see the same thing here. And I know that um, we were speaking about this before the show, Tim, but the Minnesota uh, Senate just approved – Nine million dollars to get yeah, out of state law enforcement to to help out, you know, with this upcoming week. So, you know, pray for these wow, guys dude. because, yeah, they they take a lot of beating Look, when they're out there. There are low. I, I I've heard from a lot of people in the comments. They're like, Tim, these cops who are staying are doing it because they know there are good people who need to be protected. You know, the way I described it was: your house is on fire. We repeatedly tried. We, we tried fighting the fire last year, but a bunch of people in the house voted for the arsonists. Kamala Harris was bailing these people out soliciting funds. Joe Biden, whose staff is funding the bailouts. And I'm like, so at that point, it made sense to be like, stay in fight figuratively, have, you know, show people what this means and then vote for somebody who will defend you. And they went Democrat. They voted for the people who are, who are defending the rioters, not the cops. So now you've got a problem. Now your house is burning down and the people you think you're helping are screaming at you to get out while the house burns down around them. So I understand the analogy where it's like, we got to help the people here who are good. And I'm like, I get that. But at a certain point, don't you say, like the people, like imagine a firefighter goes mm. into a burning house and he's like, I'm going to get you out of here, ma'am. And then she like just grabs on and squeezes a flaming beam as tight as she can. It's like, no, I'm staying. The firefighter's got to get out before he gets, you know, engulfed in the flames. I, I'm, look, the people who are there who are good people, what are they doing to defend these cops? Do we see press conferences held by community leaders and activists and neighborhood watches saying we support our cops and we need them here to protect us? No. But what do we see? We see endless riots in support of shutting down and abolishing the police. So so at a certain point, the police need to send a message. If you're not getting the support, nobody wants you there. They voted for the people who hate you. Then you need to say, okay, then I'll pass it off to you and then see what happens. Um, you know, the metaphor I'm thinking of is that 10 guilty people go free before one innocent person suffers. And I think that these people that aren't speaking up are the innocent people bystanders that I don't want them to suffer. That's a, that's, that's a different analogy. Are, it doesn't I, work. I'm not sure if you guys seen the news, too, is one of the city council members from Brooklyn Center came out and said, hey, you know, I get the emotions of heart, but we should wait for due process. Got fired. That, and, so that was the city manager. Yeah. And then a councilwoman for Brooklyn Center admitted she voted to have him fired because she was scared they would come after her. All right. Personal responsibility takes precedent at a certain point. If you would fire a city manager who called for due process because, you know, this cop shot this guy. And then publicly say, I'm scared they'll attack me. Okay, you need to either stand up for what you believe in or don't come to me for help when you when you vote to support these lunatics. But look, what, look, look, at a certain point, you got to throw water on the fire too. But what I think it is, Tim, from, from being on the ground, because, and I think Richard could attest to this, is we spoke to a lot of residents who mm-hmm. don't support, obviously, the constant clashes in their neighborhood, the, the destruction. The only thing is... They're, they're actually afraid just to even go on camera with us yeah. in an interview because they feel like, exactly. hey, if I go on camera with you, they'll literally well, destroy my stuff yep. tomorrow. Well, if your so house- I, I think there is a lot of community people that do want to stand up. They want to speak out. I think they're just super afraid of the retaliation exactly. because if they feel like the media, the culture, everyone is, and is against them. Since Trump, since Trump left, I mean, very much like during you know the last year, a lot of the riots have been like us versus the federal government a la Donald Trump. No Trump, no KKK, no racist USA. But now that Biden's president, it's the system itself. And so mm-hmm. you're right. Like the, the protesters on the ground, I think the ideology has shifted even even further left because basically now it's like, okay, now you really adopt our plan or else you're a fascist as well. So Biden's a fascist if, if you know he doesn't adopt, abolish the police effectively. Look, look I, I get messages from people all the time where they're like, I got my family out of Minnesota last week or I'm moving next month or I'm trying to move out now. I get messages from people who say I moved out six months ago. I, I got, I've got messages from people where they were like, 
man, Tim, I'm glad you, you said to get out of the city because I got out before the, the latest riot started and I lived real close. So listen, I, I hear what you're saying about people scared to go on camera. The founding fathers, many of them who signed the Declaration of Independence were killed, had their homes burned down, their families were killed. They risked everything mm -hmm. to stand up for what they believed in. At a certain point, you don't get to be a pampered golden age American who can sit in your home and just kick your feet back and say, I'll keep my head down and be fine mm -hmm. because they are, it is expanding. It is getting worse. And there are a lot of pundits saying they think the riots after the Chauvin trial are going to be worse than we saw last year. It's one thing to see the anger over the death of George Floyd. It's another thing to see the state say he didn't do anything wrong, depending on what the result may be. So Maxine Waters wants a charge that didn't actually happen. First degree murder, premeditation. So based on her own logic, riots are coming. If at this point the people are unwilling to stand up and defend themselves, okay, well, do you expect the, like, the, the, the people who are, who, are, who are speaking up, not even from your area, who are speaking out and risking their careers, who are getting canceled, losing their jobs for defending you know, the, 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 what's, what's true and what's correct, you expect them to come to your aid when you won't do it yourself? There's that famous line about a leader who says, I would never instruct one of my men to do something I wouldn't do myself or one of my, you know, mm -hmm. uh, men or women. Yet here you have people who won't stand up for themselves asking you to do it for them. And so there are cops who are like, I will. I'm like, nah, at a certain point, if you're a cop and they're all turning their back on you, refusing to stand up and even say the words, I support you, then you don't have support from them. No matter what they think, no matter what they're telling people, they're lying. Somebody who truly supported you would stand up Hold a press conference. We support the police and we reject this. They won't do it. Why? Because they're scared of the extremists and they aren't willing to fight back in a figurative sense, in any capacity. So at a certain point, the cops got to be like, then you're on your own. Because what happens? Kim Potter, a 26 year veteran. There's a guy wanted for aggravated robbery. Dante Wright. He's resisting arrest. He's wanted on a gun charge. So they know he's likely armed. I believe he had a 45 Ruger jumps into his car and she doesn't know what he's, what's going on. And she draws her weapon. Presumably, the story is she thought it was her taser. She shoots him. This is a tragedy. But when you have a guy wanted for an, a, an aggravated robber, that's like robbing someone with a deadly weapon. And then he jumps in his car. You're like, okay, he's, he's resisted. And he may, he's act, it's active aggression. Should she then defend herself or defend others? Well, she said she made a mistake. For that, the prosecutor comes out, what, he came out during the riots, I guess, and said, we are going to do everything in our power to see her held accountable through this system. Okay, she deserves it. She absolutely deserves whatever the system throws at her because all of these cops have been watching what the feckless, pathetic, spineless people of their community have been doing, selling them out, sacrificing them to the mob, and they thought they'd be safe. They thought the mob would ignore them. They thought they could stand there as a part of the system, propping up injustice and they would be safe. Nah, not anymore. You, you helped prop up a bunch of arsonists burning down your community, and now you're mad that you're caught in the fire? I'm not, I can't run into a burning building you chose to be in. I, I don't like this metaphor because the people of the United States are, are sucking off the teat of the Federal Reserve, bankrupting the world, and we don't deserve to die and be burning hell right, for th this it. This is no, totally... You're, you're, you're punishing people for something that they're not necessarily responsible for or we're ignorant of. The Federal Reserve has nothing to do with this. It's, the people of the United States are spearheading the global catastrophe financially. Okay, Ian, you got to get back on subject. You're talking about the Ian, people of the subject. city being responsible because they're not saying anything. No, because or they voted for some Kamala of the, Harris. Some of them, but not all of them. The majority of the state voted for the people who support it, the riots, it, and they stay there, but there's and a, they won't speak there's out. There's a huge number of people that didn't, and even and they don't deserve to, to are be they bailing punished. Water? Is silence are they bailing violence? water? Well, is that the, no, 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 no. Are they bailing the water? Reason, I think the are reason they they're not yeah. is because they're not organized, and if one of them sticks their head up, it is going to get they, cut they off. They won't even say the words? I don't know, man. They won't speak up to save their own lives? Then you get no sympathy from me. You have the option to simply stand up and say, hello, good journalist, Jorge. I wish the police had more support. They won't even do that. They're scared. Well, I'm sorry, man. Life is not always candy canes and rainbows. And when violent terrorists come to burn down your neighborhood, you at least have to say, please stop. At the, at the bare minimum, say, officer, please help us. They won't even do that. So if you've got terrorists burning down your city and you don't have the ability to at least say help, Sorry. Yeah, but like Jorge was saying, if they get on camera and they say help, their business is going to get destroyed the next All day. All that is required for evil to succeed is that good people do nothing. Yeah, but or good people put themselves out there vulnerably. That also helps evil succeed. You what? think how uh, does that make Because evil? they get killed easy. People need to stand up and at least do something instead of nothing. 
You're, you're saying they got to organize. They, they might risk themselves. Well, it starts by speaking. Well, it but not not speak. not randomly and incoherently. You, who said who said anything about random and incoherent? Not like one random person to get up and be like, I'm gonna make I'm gonna be the guy that makes a stand and gets you, my birth. If they if they formed underground like the founding okay, dude, fathers dude, did. Dude, 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 you, you brought up the founding fathers as a metaphor. Your argument is absurd. No, they they this organized. Is, they weren't the just taxpayers like taxpayers who fund the police. The, the founding fathers didn't get up the system. and say King George. I hereby declare you're an idiot yes, because they, they would have been executed on the spot. They, no, they had to organize underground for, for for maybe a certain period, but they literally had constitutional conventions in their states and sent delegates. Yeah. And they voted on these things. Right. But it was all underground. These people are paying for the police. They're paying for the government. They're paying the politicians and voting for them. And I'll tell you this, the people who voted for it, why would I argue they don't want it? If somebody was in Minneapolis and said, I want Joe Biden, whose staff members support the riots, and I want Kamala Harris, who supports the rioters, and then the rioters come to burn down their house, I can only assume they're going, yes, I voted for this. I'm happy it's happening. Why would you assume they made that mistake? I don't know what was in their, what was in their mind. It's like that guy in Los Angeles when the riots were in downtown LA or whatever, and he was cheering. This is awesome. Yeah, burn it down. And then when they came within a, within a block of his house, he goes, no, stop. Don't come to my house. Do you think it's that, not- or do you think people were misled? By the portrayal of what was been going, what what has been going on for the perhaps, past year, perhaps the media. Is, if they knew, you know, the full extent of of what has been happening, personal responsibility. You, mm-hmm. you, too many Americans for too long have been fat and lazy, figuratively and literally, sitting around not paying attention, thinking everything would be done for them. And I'll put it this way: firefighters risking their lives. Because the DAs won't prosecute these people. You want to get mad at cops? Okay, why should a firefighter risk his life running into literal burning buildings that are collapsing? Because when the police make arrests, the DA cuts them loose. You want to support your community? You need to speak up and do it. But if people are sitting back saying, someone will do it for me, eventually your house falls down because you're not maintaining it. I cannot, you guys cannot, and the police cannot be the people who are begging, just carry your own weight, dude, for once. They won't do it. They won't. So they vote for it. And it's, I'll tell you this, ignorance is no excuse for supporting tyranny. I, I understand the media manipulates. I hate them for it. I understand that the, these, these, these extremists are terrorizing them and threatening them. But if you don't stand up and just at least try and no one does, this then is, tyranny wins. This is the, why I brought up the Federal Reserve and the U.S. people. Ignorance is no excuse for supporting tyranny. We live in the empire. So being ignorant of that is not an excuse to support that. That's correct. That's my point. You're right. But I don't want to punish and destroy everyone. Who, who's, who's, you, mean, you, you mean you wouldn't join Antifa is what you're saying? Well, I, I just, I, I have this stupid sympathy for those ignorant people. I don't want to see them suffer. No one does. But well, you're making the argument that you want the, the police to leave. So that, I'm sorry, Richie, what? what? What breeds that ignorance? Like, why, why aren't people Laziness. aware of that? We live in a media in a free manipulation society Comfort, yeah. with the internet. Wealth. We, we, we for too long have been people in good times breeding weak individuals, weak citizens who don't care about civic duty or responsibility. Yeah. And I'm not talking about some nationalistic whatever. I'm talking about literally being like going and giving your firefighters some brownies and being like, thank you for everything you do. Or going to your cops and talking to them about issues you're concerned about, you've heard about in the media. They don't even do that. They don't even, they don't even do that. It's just media manipulation political sectarianism, and a bunch of lazy, disinterested people who are like, I'm keeping my head down because I got it good. Okay, listen, there was a period in, in, our, in, our, in our country, in our nation's history, where death was like, you died. You know what I mean? Looking at these stories from back in like the old pioneer days in the Wild West, people understood risk and responsibility. And they had to wake up at six in the morning and farm and go to bed at 11 at night. And it was work, work, work all day, every day. Now we have all of the comforts of the first world. We have fast food, McDonald's. We get, we, we, we have too much food. Americans are, are gaining weight like crazy and they're doing less work. And they're, now you have a whole section of a, a sect of people who are leftists who think they shouldn't have to do work at all. We are just becoming, as a, as a country, we, we reject responsibility for our own lives and our own selves. And we say the police will do it. And then when the police can't do it and they're overrun, well, I'm not going to speak up. Someone else will have to do it. Okay, well then, listen, man. If a fire is raging towards your home and you're like, I'm not going to put out a firefight, I'll get here. Okay, well, eventually your house burns down. That's not me saying I want your house to burn. I don't want your house to burn down. But it's also me saying I don't want my firefighters to die because you refuse to start turning your hose on. At the very least, you could have done that, right? And, 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 and wet your house down. Now your house is a raging five alarm fire and the, and the firefighters are the ones going to die because of you. That's why I'm saying the police need to back out before things, but before, look, I'll tell you what's going to happen. The cops stick around. We get a Kim Potter situation. 
If the cops right off the bat said, we won't stand for this. Well, then Kim Potter wouldn't have been there to create another circumstance that they use to light the country on fire. I'm not saying I know what the solution is, but I can tell you this. It's a Chinese finger trap and the cops keep pulling and you're not going to get out of it. You keep doing this. The people around you won't support you. So something needs to change and needs to change now. So people realize what's happening. Even when the cops are there, I mean, Kenosha, there were no firefighters and no cops like in a situation where they were actually needed, like a shooting or a fire. You know, we saw they were basically focused, like Jorge was saying earlier, entirely on the riots. And so like over the last year, if you look all of, at all of the criminal data across the country, I mean, that's effectively what's been happening is the police are, are paying attention to these the civil unrest and, and not paying attention to the violent crimes that actually really impact the communities. Yeah. Well, one thing, too, is that, that is interesting that I think we'll, we'll start to figure out in these couple months is how each city, major city, deals with the potential civil unrest and, and the communication they've used. I, um, in Los Angeles, the Los Angeles County Sheriff, Alex Villanova, he came out aggressive and said, hey, we got National Guard on standby. We got all this and stuff. We are not playing around compared to last year. And according to some sources on the ground, I mean, LAPD, so far as I know this past week, has been handling the demonstrations pretty well. And I think... Uh, I think Los Angeles, I mean, I don't know about every city, but I know Los Angeles, has they, they for sure are going to fix the mistakes they made last year because their they're, they're county sheriff is a little bit aggressive. But uh, I, I do definitely see what Tim is saying. They need, the, the police officers or law enforcement, they need some type of support. It needs to come from somewhere. In Portland, uh, I speak to a lot of the officers, they feel like their work is useless because they'll make the arrest, they'll do all this stuff, but then the district attorney will say, off the hook, off the hook, off the hook, and that's going to bring morale down. Um, and I think in Los Angeles, what we're seeing is we're seeing an L.A. County Sheriff say, hey, we're taking the aggressive lane. We're ready to go. We have National Guard on standby. And, and I know they, the, the DA down there, George Cascone, is not, uh, it's not a guy they like. He's super progressive. But even the L.A. County Sheriff is saying, no, I, we don't even care what the DA is doing. We're going bullhead, all, you know, all, all forces in. And um, so far, L.A. hasn't seen uh, that, that violence that we've seen in, in other cities. What's the Internet's definition of insanity? Doing the same thing over and over again, expecting a different outcome? That was Einstein, yeah. Was it Einstein? I think, I think it was yeah. a meme. So you got these cops in Portland who are like, I'm going to arrest this guy for breaking the law. And then they bring him to the station and the DA goes, you're free to go. And they go, hey, I know. I'll arrest him tomorrow <laughs> for breaking the law. And the DA goes, you're free to go. The woman who, who set fire, who's accused of setting fire to the police uh, union building, she was arrested last year on some serious charges and they just cut her loose and dropped the charges. Then she comes back not even a year later and burns down the police union building. And then they release her without bail. At a certain point, man, I don't, I don't know what these cops think they're doing. It's like there's this meme video where a guy. What like, else can they do though? Leave, you know. Leave. Other, I mean, but leave, you got dude. bill. Well, they got bills to pay. You know, that's not realistic for somebody who. If literally, your house is burning down, will you be like, I can't leave. I'm homeless. I'll be homeless. I, I, it's but it's like my house is burning down, but my family's going to starve if we don't stay. So you, you stay know? in a house that's literally on fire. <laughs> you're gonna still die. getting a paycheck. Look, you know, as long as you're alive, as long as it, you're. Breathing. What you just said is very interesting. What you've said is it's actually safer and easier for the police to be in the violent riots in a system that's broken and not working than it is to actually leave and go somewhere somewhere that would be more... more uh, because what, what, what is a cop's future employment in this current climate right now? Oh, oh I mean, hey, I just left the Portland PD. Uh, you want to hire me to be an NBC correspondent? No, no, no. Think about that. <laughs> think about that. That means while Minneapolis burns down, it is actually safer and more secure for an officer to be an ineffective and villainized individual working for the department than it is for them to move their family to any other city for any other job. Thanks for checking out this clip from the TimCast IRL podcast. If you want to see the full show, come back to this channel, youtube.com slash TimCast IRL, Monday through Friday at 8 p.m., where you can leave comments and super chat, and we actually will read your comments on the show. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe, and if you want exclusive members-only content, segments you can't get anywhere else, go to TimCast.com, become a member, and we even have full bonus episodes. Thanks for hanging out. And we'll see you all next time.